if you've been ripped off. I feel very cheated, cheated and conned. But are struggling to get back your hard-earned cash. Everything that I'd worked for was gone, basically. Help is at hand from the sheriffs. Hello. We're High Court Enforcement. We have an outstanding writ of control. They're back with a brand new team. Determined to get you the money you're owed. You're wasting our time. I'm now going to call a locksmith. Acting with the High Court's authority. He's the one with a court writ. So he's the victim, not you. They have the power to remove assets. We're here to retrieve full balance, if not remove goods otherwise. To ensure you're not shortchanged. The sheriffs being our last saviour and hope. Every year, sheriffs in England and Wales recover your unpaid debts totalling £100 million. I've got my money back and now we can put this matter to bed. Coming up, when the boss of a janitor business fails to pay a former employee after unlawfully deducting money from his wages. We left numerous letters, to be, to be fair to you, mate. Uh, we tried to ring you this morning, didn't answer. The sheriffs find their own way of settling the debt. We might fall lucky, there could be a specialist one uh, for, for sports memorabilia or something like that. Mum of two, Georgina Yates, ended up with the tenants from hell. I can only assume that the dogs have maybe not taken outside when they should have been, because it, it did smell of urine when I came in. But the estate agent responsible... It's a high court writ, yes. ...doesn't want to give her a refund. We wouldn't really communicate with me, just said, I'm off to the office. And when the sheriffs visit a country estate... We're going to be chopping that lock. Luke lays down the law. Your vehicle will be going, sir. Going where? On the back of a tow sir. truck. When entrusted with a High Court writ, the sheriffs will often go to great lengths to seek out the debtor. It's approaching 5am, and enforcement agents Miles Whitworth and Ben Dyram are on their way to a cleaning business in Manchester that's proving a tough nut to crack. OK, so we're off to Intrinsic Cleaning Limited um, in Altrincham. First visit was uh, around a month ago. We've left correspondence every time and uh, they haven't been in touch to contact us. These people literally will load up and go out on their daily jobs, so hence why we're as early as we are. Possibly the element of surprise, but some people might think this is a little bit extreme, but we have to do what we have to do to make contact. Intrinsic cleaning owes money to a former worker following an employment tribunal. The court ruled the company was making unlawful deductions from the employees' wages. So today we're after £2,300 in that region. Um, we have authorisation for a locksmith, so if there's nobody on site or they lock us out when we arrive, then we have authorisation to go in. It's a cleaning company, we believe they have steam cleaners, pressure washers. This will be the third time the sheriffs have visited Intrinsic Cleaning to try to get the former employee their money. So today they're determined to do all they can to get it settled once and for all. It's been going a long time now, as you say. Eventually it wears a little bit thin even with us, doesn't it, you know? Desperate to avoid detection, the sheriffs head to the back of the unit, where they believe the company operates from. We'll get back in car, we'll pull up yeah. around front. With the shutters down and no lights on, it's not the start the sheriffs were hoping for. I think we might be a little bit too early. Um, we set off at quarter to five this morning. We got here about half past five. Um, hopefully it does should start arriving about six o'clock. It's five to six now. Ben and Miles sit tight in the shadows. That's easy to do. I don't want to spook him, so he calls us lads and tells them not to come down here. Might give it another half an hour. Yeah, Being we're impatient. Playing the waiting game. Um... But as the sun begins to rise, it seems the sheriff's early morning stakeout isn't quite going to plan. 
Although a High Court writ empowers the sheriffs to force entry and remove goods from commercial premises, it is costly and time-consuming, and usually a last resort. Morning. When was the last time we saw uh, Jason? Three, four weeks, I think. To strip the place, do you know? What? Do you reckon he's moved to strip the place? So. Okay, yeah, he probably will. Concerned that the debtor may have packed up and left, Miles calls upon the services of a local locksmith. Hi, buddy. Yeah, do you want to uh, come down? Do you want me to give you the address? Round this guide off. Right. Set these off. That guide will come out, and then this you can pull out and slide them out one at a time. Yeah, take the sections out. No sooner has the locksmith shredded the shutter. In. There's a floor polisher. Ben and Miles are relieved to see potential assets, drastically improving their chances of getting the former employee the money he's owed. One, two, three. Hey, this isn't too bad. Big place. Just had a quick look through the drawers. I can't see any keys or anything. So I'm just having a quick look for uh, for van keys. Um, there is an unsigned written van outside, so we don't know who the ownership is of that yet. So I'm just looking in all the usual places, see if I can find a set of keys. Company vehicles are always a quick and easy way for the sheriffs to recoup a debt. But with no sign of any keys, they're now on the hunt for other lucrative assets owned by the cleaning company. They'd usually have a sticker on. I mean, they've got intrinsic FM written all over them, see? Stickers on, asset ID, so it could be leased. Asset ID. Well, maybe he leases them out. Or he maybe buys them and hires them out, yeah. I think they lease them out, mate, or hire them out, I should say. Due to the holiday shutdown, we have not charged for that period. There's a lot of the machinery actually got written in uh, permanent marker and stuff. Um, if you were going to lease something, you wouldn't tag it with your own tags, basically. So, yeah, hope, hopeful at the moment, at least. These uh, industrial floor cleaners behind us might uh, be worth a few quid. Same as these hoovers and stuff, to be honest. Yeah. They're certainly hundreds of pounds a piece. Confident they may have some leverage, Miles is keen to let the company director know they're in his unit. We're going to send a few pictures to the defendant's phone that were inside. If you uh, own this business and someone sent you a picture, he, he doesn't know. He ignores my number because you've been ignoring it, but if you inside his unit, you'd, uh, you'd be a bit worried. And within minutes, the company director, Jason Hill, is on the phone. We left numerous letters, to be, to be fair to you, mate. Never got in contact with us. Uh, we tried to ring you this morning, didn't answer. He's unhappy, saying he didn't receive adequate notice regarding today's visit. I've, I've put three letters, no, no, two letters, sorry, and they've sent, I hand, I hand, I hand, I hand delivered these letters. Yes. Despite avoiding their visits and calls for over a month, Mr. Hill isn't happy the sheriffs have forced entry and changed the locks. That's fine, that's all doing well to do that when you've actually got, when you've actually got the key to open the door originally. When you break in somewhere, it's a bit different. Cheers. Bye. I've just been on the phone to the defendant as well. He's actually going to come down and get the keys back for the place, so he can have the keys back once he pays for that, basically. To be fair, see what he turns up in vehicle wise, I'll just clamp it. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Make him prove ownership. But he has to prove what if it's a business one or his yeah. own, doesn't he? A few minutes later, Mr. Hill pulls up in a van outside. No, not really. Well, that'll be fixed. <clears throat> Adam? No, it's been done by a professional locksmith. Right, it does that. Yeah. So. The director of the company turned up there. Um, wasn't too impressed uh, seeing us all here. And uh, basically drove away. Come and gone. I think he'll walk back. I might just phone you, mate. Miles gives the company director a call. 
and to his surprise, Mr. Hill picks up. Hello? Are you going to come back? No. But within seconds, he's hung up. I've had enough. With the company director still not paying the money he owes to a former employee, the sheriffs are running out of options. So we've given him seven days to come up with the funds. If he doesn't, then we'll have to uh, think about removing the goods uh, and selling them by public auction. We've uh, changed the locks on the premises so he can't get back in. If he does try to get back in, that will be a criminal offence, especially if he takes the goods out. That will be theft now because they are in our control. Hopefully he will come back to us and, and deal with the problem he has, and that's paying the debt to the people that he talked to. Later, the sheriffs return. We're only a minute or so away from the site, uh, but we've had a phone call, and we believe the tenant is on site, the debtor, so this could be interesting. But will there be any assets left for them to seize? Few of us can afford to be left out of pocket. If you've been let down by faulty goods or substandard services and are struggling to get your money back, you can use the county courts to recover your hard-earned cash. Around 2 million claims are made every year in England and Wales and can be filed by post or online for a small fee. Both parties in the case will be asked to submit evidence and you may have to attend a court hearing. If you win your case, a county court judgment or CCJ will be issued against the debtor. If they still don't pay, it's time to call the sheriffs. Buy to let property is still a popular choice for people looking to supplement their pension or build a nest egg for the future. Finding good tenants is key, as bad ones can prove a costly mistake. And the sheriffs often find themselves picking up the pieces when something goes wrong. Today, enforcement agent Mark King and his colleague are heading to the Lancashire coast in pursuit of one such debt. We're off to Livam St Anne's. Uh, I've got a High Court writ for an estate agent. Uh, Anne's Dell Estate Agents Limited. Amount owed £1,380.47. The, the claimant is an individual. I would imagine we've got to this point because the, the claimant has tried everything they can to, to reclaim their money and they haven't got there, so hopefully we're going to do that for them today. The money is owed to first-time landlord and mother of two, Georgina Yates. Having recently purchased the new house for her growing family, Georgina and her husband wanted to keep hold of the property they'd outgrown and turn it into a rental. So the decision that we made was to convert the mortgage into a buy-to-let mortgage so that that would enable us to rent it out and have an income and a lifetime investment with that property. So we redecorated, we did the gardens, uh, made sure it was lovely for somebody to move in. With the house spick and span, all Georgina needed was some tenants when she chanced upon Ansdell Estate Agents Limited. The estate agents had been recommended to me through a friend um, and I made an appointment with them and they came to the property to have a look at it, uh, to take some photographs. A few weeks later, the estate agent had found a couple who were keen to move in. But the day before the new tenancy began, Georgina discovered something was amiss. The tenant was due to move in on the Monday of that week. Um, so on the Sunday, my husband and I had gone down to the property to do a final check, make sure the garage was clear. When we arrived, the tenants were already in the property. That was a bit of a surprise for me. Uh, they'd already been given the keys. Um, I contacted the estate agents about that on the Monday and they said, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Despite the estate agent's assurances, Georgina was left feeling uneasy about her new tenants. First impressions aren't everything, but there was something in my gut that told me that something would not be right. I felt that they weren't gonna value and look after my property. Putting her feelings to one side, Georgina hoped her initial assessment of the situation was wrong. But a few days later, she received a call out of the blue from one of the neighbours that live next to her rental property. 
My neighbours had started to report that there were, um, as we described, unsavoury characters hanging outside the house, uh, to and fro um, and the kind of people that were described uh, were very intimidating of my neighbours to the point where they felt they needed to lock their doors and they didn't want their children playing in the front garden for fear of who might be outside. That, um, that for me, was the most upsetting thing, the thought that my neighbours no longer felt safe. Anne's Dell estate agents say they were informed by a different neighbour that they'd just heard a few slamming doors and hadn't seen any unsavoury characters hanging around. However, Georgina was told the antisocial behaviour was getting worse. Because there had now been a catalogue of incidents that I'd reported to the estate agent, all of which had been raised with the tenant and things still weren't getting any better, about two or three weeks after they'd moved in, um, I spoke with the estate agent and asked what further action could be taken. And then very shortly after the estate agent and I had had that conversation, the tenant themselves decided that they wanted to move out. After the tenants left, the estate agent instructed an independent company to check the property, and they said the house had been left in a satisfactory condition. But when Georgina checked the property, she strongly disagreed. When I had a look at the house after the tenants had left, I couldn't believe what state it was in after three weeks. There was a really strong smell coming from the carpet and I think that was due to them having had dogs in here when permission hadn't been granted. I can only assume that the dogs hadn't been taken outside when they should have been because it, it did smell of urine when I came in. And things weren't any better in the kitchen. I could tell that there was something that had been in the cupboards. They, when you opened them, they smelled like cannabis and also the cooker had been damaged and needed to be replaced. So it was surprising how much damage had been done within three weeks. Yeah, I was really angry that somebody had treated my property this way, especially when I'd wanted it to be so lovely for them to move in. After contacting Anne's Dell estate agents to raise the issues, Georgina discovered they had already given the tenants their full deposit back, something Georgina hadn't agreed to. Georgina was now out of pocket. She needed the deposit to pay for repairing the damage the tenants had caused to her property. I felt the estate agents hadn't been open and honest with me about the arrangements that had been made, um, and that's what I was disappointed with. The estate agents didn't agree. And that wasn't all she discovered. What transpired was that they actually had a personal relationship with the tenants. My frustration with the estate agent was that I had been overly reassured about the quality of these tenants. I felt that that was dishonest of the estate agents. and I felt that I'd been deceived. Anne's Dell estate agents deny having a personal relationship with the tenants, claiming they just knew the tenant's daughter as she had previously rented a property through them. That conversation was the last time that I dealt with the estate agents informally. Following this, I decided to take some legal advice. After exhausting all other avenues, Georgina felt she had no choice but to take Howard Boswell, the Anne's Dell estate agents' company director, to court. So in the final hearing of the small claims court, Howard Boswell did attend in order to defend his position. The judge ruled straight away in my favour. I was happy with this because I thought that I was going to be reimbursed for all the work that I'd had to undertake on the property to get it to a fit state and everything's going to be sorted. I was, I was really happy that it was all going to come to a close. Georgina was awarded her £650 deposit plus costs. But almost a year on, Anstell Estate Agents Limited still haven't paid her what she's owed. Feeling desperately ripped off, Georgina has called in the sheriffs. I feel that this is the last chance for me to be able to get the money that's owed to me. Um, it's every other avenue has been exhausted, this is my only chance and if the sheriffs can't get the money then I, I'll have to be out of pocket. On the Lancashire coast, Mark and his colleague are approaching Lytham St Anne's, the town where Ansdell estate agents trade from. We just need to get there and establish that it is the company we're looking for. Um, if it is, find out who's 
who's the main person there in charge, um, and then explain to them why we're there. The address on the sheriff's writ is located on a busy high street. But as the door number doesn't match any of the shops, the sheriffs think it must be a flat above. If it is the flat above, there was someone looking out the window a minute ago. So they're probably expecting someone, because they've had all the notices and everything by now. So the person Mark spotted could be the company director, Mr Boswell. There's somebody definitely okay. in that flat, yeah, because he was looking out the front window. Later. It's a high court writ, yes. As the sheriffs finally catch up with Mr. Boswell, will they manage to get Georgina her money? We have a high court order instructing us to seize your assets if you don't pay this debt. Getting people their money back takes an enforcement agent to all sorts of addresses, from private homes and small businesses to large corporate offices. But today, Luke Peacock and Grant Bailey have an unusual destination on their itinerary. This morning we're heading off to Tunbridge Wells, visiting a company called GP Management Limited. And the balance we're looking to collect is just over £80,000, so a very large sum of money. GPE Management Limited is based at Groombridge Place, a large country estate which has grounds that are open to the public, including a cafe and an adventure playground. We believe the claimant on this one supplied the, the debtor company with um, outdoor equipment, activity equipment, um, and the bill hasn't been paid. The sheriffs have also discovered that the site is currently closed due to recent flooding. That could mean that they are trying to repair the grounds going to be a lot of people there, a lot of equipment and machinery, um, which we'll obviously be looking to, to seize if we have to. Just pulling up now, just on the right hand side here. Oh, this is very nice. I think this house is not going to be connected. Private house, no parking. So, no, this is not connected to the business. Confident the manor house is a separate entity, the sheriffs want to locate the business that's operating in the grounds. We fly as far in as we can. This is as far as we can go. We're going to have a long walk, you know. Clearly. The gate we're currently sat in front of now is locked. So we're going to have to get out and take a walk, see if anyone's on site. But it's nice in the summer. Although sheriffs have the legal authority to force entry to a commercial premises, they will normally try other means first. Luke and Grant head towards the house to see if there's anyone there who can help. That sounds a mean dog. Sorry to bother you. Do you live in this whole building? So, oh, you. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Come in. Sorry about that. Just shut the gate. Hello. Madam? Hello? Might be onto something here. Yeah? What's she shut the door for? I don't know, mate. The lack of cooperation suggests the woman in the house may have something to do with the debtor company after all. The sheriffs step into an outbuilding in search of clues. What we got? Groombridge Asset Management Limited. So we're at the right place. Groombridge Asset Management, though. GPE Limited. GPE? GPE Limited. That's what we want? Yeah. What right. is it? It's a box there. It's got records in it. We've just found a lot of paperwork here to do with the debtor company. So we came here with the assumption that the property is going to be a private residence from someone completely different, but it looks like it's going to be the same people. 
Grant heads back to the car. But when he arrives at the gate, someone is waiting to get out of the grounds. Yep, no worries, mate. Allowing him the opportunity to get in. This Grand Bridge place of state, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we're enforcement agents, mate. Is there a manager or director about? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen anyone today, to be honest. You'd have to go round that way to the house. Moments later, a buggy pulls up. How you doing? Hello, sir. Not bad, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, very well, thanks. Good, good. I've been told to give you this phone number, and this is the person you need to contact. Okay. Oh, so word's got around then, has Does it? Does that help anybody? Yes, okay. please, sir. Who is the guy that you'll be you calling? You'll be talking to the manager. Uh, Gerald. Gerald, yeah. Is he inside? No, he's not inside. There's no one. There's no one. Well, there is. She's just slammed the door on us. Yeah. Because she doesn't want you in our garden, that's why. I don't want my dog let her start. You won't go any further today. Okay, we will be, sir. No, you won't. Yes, we will be, sir. Right, if you'd like to give Sherry a ring, sort that out, and I'll get back to what I'm doing. The Jerry in question is the director of the debtor company, Mr. Gerald Cryer. Hi, can I speak to Gerald, please? Thank you. Um, hi, my name's Luke Peacock. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Um, and we're at Groombridge Place looking for um, GP Management Limited. Mr. Cryer says the company's in the process of being liquidated. Since when? You instructed administrators last week. OK, has the meeting gone ahead? OK, then the company's not in administration. So we're here, we're here to collect £80,500. Mr Cryer tells Luke that he only recently took over the company after the owner of the estate passed away suddenly. He says it's being wound up and it doesn't have any money. OK, so I'm going to ask you... I need to ask you now, because I have a feeling we're going to be playing games this morning, because there's a lady here on site that's knocking gates behind us as we go. She's the same lady that shut the door in our face. So what we need to establish right now is if this balance is going to be paid, if you need some time to get it paid. Otherwise, we need to carry on before we start getting locked in and out of places. An hour. Thanks a lot. Bye. I've just spoken to the director of the company. He's under the impression that they've gone into liquidation. Paperwork was only submitted last week, so that hasn't actually gone through yet. He's now making phone calls to solicitors, etc., and then we'll hear back from him within the hour. But for us at the moment, we need to get on with what we're doing now. Because if there's more gates up there, they'll be in the process of locking them, etc. If you've won a county court judgment but are still out of pocket because it hasn't been paid, for £66 you can get the case transferred up to the High Court, which will issue a writ for enforcement by the sheriffs. Can you please come to the door? Here with the High Court writ today. We will be executing today, if not removing goods. These High Court awards have to be paid, and the sheriffs have unique legal powers to ensure you get the money you're owed here regarding a High Court writ of control. We can't get off the site today without full payment. If you shut the door us, we'll get locked with it. Why are you preventing us access? And there's no limit on the size of debt they can pursue. £8,691.22p. £40,386. You can just do the bank transfer. If they're successful, they'll recover your money and costs from the debtor. Brilliant. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. As well as their own fees, which are set by the government. We'll have to take the case to the next stage and we'll have to get removal trucks here to remove your goods. If the sheriffs can't get your money, you'll be asked to pay another £90 to cover their costs. In Lancashire, enforcement agent Mark King is trying to track down Anstell estate agents who owe money to landlord Georgina Yates. There's somebody definitely in that flat, yeah, because he was looking out the front window. While Mark waits outside the flat, his colleague asks around at the local shops to see if anyone knows Anstell estate agents or its director. Sorry to disturb you, sir. 
I've just been to number eight, and they've said you'll be able to help me possibly get a telephone number for Mr Howard the Boswell. Do you have a number for him? Although this is not the estate agents named on the writ, they appear to know Mr Boswell. Would you be able to call him for me? He's in, but he doesn't want to answer his door. A staff member calls him, and Mr Boswell finally emerges from the flat. It's a high court writ, yes. He isn't, however, in the mood for conversation. I told him where I was, but he wouldn't really communicate with me. He just said, I'm off to the office, I think is the word he used. Mark's colleague explains why the sheriffs are here. I'm an officer of the High Court. We're here in reference to money you owe to Georgina Miller Yates. At this moment in time, so it's £1,380 and 47 pence. We have a High Court order instructing us to seize your assets if you don't pay this debt. Mr Boswell says Anstell Estate Agents Limited is about to be wound up and that everything in the flat belongs to him personally. So, as far as we're concerned, the company's still trading. It's still live and active on Company's house. I'm quite happy to come back to the property with you and you show me what, what is yours and if everything is in the property belongs to you, then we're quite happy to, you know, discuss then what we can do from there. But you owe this money to this lady and, as I say, we are here to address that. Mr Boswell wants to know how he can appeal. Any appeal that you would have would have to be made to the courts. So why would you be appealing, sir? Did you answer to the claim originally? The debtor did attend court and lost, so the time for legal argument has passed. Running out of options, Mr Boswell agrees to pay. So bank details are all there. If you could make sure that reference number is on it. He makes a bank transfer, and the debt is settled in full. There you go. So there is a copy of the court order, the writ. OK. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Cheerio, then. Thank you as well for your time, sir. Bye-bye. Sorted. The debtor came out of the address on the writ and proceeded to come round to this address, which is another estate agent. Took him a little, little time to get the money sorted out, um, but eventually he did pay, cleared funds, full amount. Good result, I think. Georgina's long wait to get her money back is finally over. I'm absolutely delighted that the sheriffs have been able to get the full amount. It happened so quickly, I cannot believe it. I've got my money back and now we can put this matter to bed. I'll be able to move on as a landlord to a good tenant, but also just get on with being a good mum and working hard and just being with my family. Ansdell estate agents told us a family member of the tenants had agreed to pay the money owed to Georgina. When it was not paid, Ansdell estate agents made contact again. The family member requested the court paperwork to make the payment, and Ansdell estate agents assumed the matter was settled. Luke and Grant are at Groombridge Place, a country estate in Kent, where GPE Management Limited owes £80,000 to a supplier of adventure playground equipment. The company director says the business is going into liquidation. You instructed administrators last week. And no one at the site seems keen to help. We won't pay any no. Okay, we will be, sir. No, you won't. Yes, we will. The sheriffs are now on the hunt for assets. So here we go. Here we go, we've had one gate blocked. And they've padlocked it as well. So let's go and have a chat with them. Hi there. Right. Yes, fine. Is this your vehicle? That is, yeah. That's your vehicle, right, OK. Well, our next move... Okay. Well, right, you, you might want to hear this if it's to do with your vehicle. We're going to be chopping that lock, and we're going to be, and we're going to be moving. Well, your vehicle will be going, sir. Going where? On the back of a tow truck. And then we deal with it then. Just let's just get on. I don't know what you're going to take anyway because it's, 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 this is all our stuff. So. Why have you locked the gates then? The contract. Sorry? 
No, you've locked all the gates on the site. The gates are locked anyway. Well, we're not that vehicle's usually not parked here, is it? Fine, no problem. We'll carry on. Yeah, might be able to pull it over. <laughs> what a fantastic lock. Yeah, I've got skills. So by my standing, that's gaining peaceful entry. The sheriffs can now do some tactical parking of their own making sure the gate stays open while blocking any vehicles from leaving. Mate, I'll give you that one. That Mate, saved us a lot of headache. I want to get to that digger. So do I. Get the key out. <coughs> These are contractors um, employed by the company or a member of the company here. Um, they've been instructed to do whatever they can to prevent us getting on site. Um, and they failed quite miserably. Just as the sheriffs had imagined, there is expensive groundwork machinery on site, and while the key to the digger may be out of reach for now, the dumper truck's key is not. Come on, Sam. <laughs> or the buggies. But before the sheriffs get any further, Luke gets a call from someone who says he's the official liquidator, wanting to stop assets from being removed. Action's not going to be halted on your say-so. At this present time, we're going to look at getting a removal truck here for the goods. I take instruction from the office. If they tell me to stand down, then I will stand down. If they don't tell me to stand down, then I will carry on. The liquidator may not hold any authority over the sheriffs, but the news that one has already been appointed is a game changer. What we have to bear in mind now with the liquidators being on the phone is whether we actually remove these goods. It could be very costly for us if the company then goes into liquidation. Um, we may have to stall the goods for a long, longer period um, and ultimately the goods will then have to be returned. Soon, the sheriff's office receives formal notification that the company has now officially gone into administration. Luke and Grant will be walking away empty-handed. It's not a great result for the claimant, but legal due process has to follow, um, and unfortunately, that's what's happened in this case. The claimant, who supplied GPE Management Limited with outdoor adventure equipment, will now join a list of creditors. Once the company's assets are liquidated, they are likely to receive only a small proportion of the money they're owed. Back in Manchester, Ben and Miles have a big day ahead. We're off to Altrincham. We're returning to uh, Intrinsic Cleaning Limited. The last visit, we locked the premises up uh, secure goods on site. The tenant turned up, he had an opportunity to speak to us and he chose not to. And again, he has not been in touch and made no offers to make payment. With the company director, Jason Hill, failing to pay a former employee the money he's owed, Ben and Miles are returning to seize the company's assets. We're meeting a removal team to remove the goods that we secured on site. Uh, this is simply our last resort. Uh, we have to do our best to recover the outstanding debt and at this moment in time, this is our only option. It's a funny one, isn't it? Because if you get payment off people like this, it's really satisfying. Yeah. So, it's been a frustrating one there, hasn't it? It's taken a bit of time to get to this stage. Thanks. Mr Hill has ignored the sheriffs for months. Could there be a last-minute surprise? We're only a minute or so away from the site, uh, but we've had a phone call from the roller shutter engineer and we believe the tenant is on site, the debtor. So this could be interesting. See But as Ben and Miles arrive at Intrinsic Cleaning, oh, yeah. the only person there to greet them is the locksmith. If the company director has been back to the unit and removed assets, including industrial cleaning equipment, Ben and Miles will once again be leaving empty-handed. 
Yeah. No electrical last time. To Ben's relief, there's no sign that anyone's been in. Uh, yeah, we heard that he was possibly on site. Uh, however, when we've turned up, uh, there's nobody here, and everything was and is exactly how we left it. Uh, orange floor polisher. Yeah. Blue floor cleaner. A record must be made of each item taken, including a description and any serial number. It can then be sold at auction to get the former employee the money they're owed. Uh, just walking around to the front of the building because the removal guys are here. Just need to get them to the back so we can start loading the van up. We're clearing the stuff out quite rapidly. There's always a lot of effort when you remove goods. Oh, wait, it's on my fingers. Ow, 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 ow. That's why it's an absolute last resort. The actual man power, you know, you've got three removal lads, uh, plus myself and Miles. The added cost of removing the assets has increased the debt to £4,000. Ben, there's a lawnmower back there to give them their best chance of recouping the money. Ben does another sweep of the office in search of anything else of value, like this potentially lucrative piece of sports memorabilia. A signed Everton football shirt. Yeah, we're going to take that uh, as an asset of the company. It's, it's within the office. We might fall lucky. There could be a specialist one uh, for, for sports memorabilia or something like that. I believe we've got nearly everything we can of value. Five plastic tarpaulins, Matt. Yeah, we know we're done with this job now. I'm going to be happy to see the back of it, uh, hopefully, as long as the goods raise the, the funds we need. Seven plastic dust pans. And brushes. Three brushes. Do you reckon we've got enough? Yeah, we've got everything of value, I suppose, haven't we? Yeah, we couldn't take anything else. It's just, just rubbish now, isn't it, really? Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Hard work. Got it done. With everything of value removed, all that's left for Ben and Miles is to hand back the new keys to the company director. Yeah, we've invested a lot of time and effort here. Um, it's not a small operation, he's removing goods. There's a lot of people involved in the removal other than ourselves. Um, so yeah, good result. Hopeful that we'll recover the money for the claimant. Hopefully we'll get enough, but you can't really predict it. Uh, but yeah, quite happy with where we are at the moment. The goods fetch just over £2,200 at auction to go towards covering the sheriff's fees and paying the former employee the money he's owed. Job done.